Hi friends. Uh, welcome back to Die Diaries. I'm hesitating there because as I'm recording this, I'm not quite sure what episode it's going to be. And that is because I am interviewing a guest tomorrow and I haven't decided yet if that's going to be the next episode or if this is going to be the next episode. So it doesn't really matter. Welcome back to today's episode or the most recent episode of the Diet Diaries. Um, I'm going to jump right in today. No announcements, I don't think. Um, maybe I'm forgetting something. Who knows? And this is actually a good follow up to episode 139, which is either going to be last week or two weeks ago, where I talked about progress. If you haven't listened to that, I talk about how to measure progress without the scale, really without any kind of numbers, clothing sizes, scale, tape measures, any of that stuff. Um, like what we're looking for, like how do you know you're making progress when either the scale isn't moving or you're not using the scale um, or you know that you can no longer rely on the scale. Um, so it might surprise you that today I am talking about the scale and it's actually, they're a really nice fit because I'm going to talk all about what the scale is, what it isn't, why you might want to use it, why you might not want to use it, how to decide there's no right or wrong, right? This is all just context and information so that you can make an informed autonomous choice about what works for you. Um, so let's just kind of dive in here. This scale, we think that when we get on the scale, that it's only basically showing us if we have gained or lost fat. And arguably that is like the least, the last thing it's telling you, right? The scale is measuring your entire body weight and your body weight fluctuates every day. It is completely normal and part of being a healthy human being for your body weight to fluctuate every day. On no, under no circumstances and on no, for no human being alive, is your body weight going to be exactly the same every single day for days, months, years on end? That would literally make you a robot. So that's kind of the first big thing to understand. We have, for some reason, been convinced that our body weight, if it goes up, we've gained weight. If it's gone down, that we've lost, I'm going to say fat. If it's gone up, we've gained fat. If it's gone down, we've lost fat. That is not how it works because the scale is measuring everything inside of your body. And there's a lot more besides just body fat inside your body, right? So when the scale is fluctuating, on a day-to-day -day basis, and you can see fluctuations from really small, like uh, tenths of a pound, up to four, five, six pounds. And you might be like, holy crap, how is that even possible? There's a lot of things that contribute to that, right? One of the biggest things, or I shouldn't even say one of the biggest things, I'm just going to share a couple of them. Um, one is obviously water retention. And water retention can be influenced by many different factors. How much salt you ate how many carbohydrates you've eaten. Carbs hold on to water. Molecularly, that's how they work. I think it's three grams of water bind onto one gram of carbohydrate um, at like a, you know, at like a cellular level. So your body, if you eat more carbs, you're going to retain more water. That's why when you go on a low carb diet, you get like a sudden drop on the scale. It's not because you've lost like seven or eight pounds of body fat in five or six days. It's because your body's releasing all the water that the carbs hold on to. It doesn't make carbs bad. It's just science, right? This is like biochemistry. Um, if you have had a bowel movement, right? Obviously, like if you are not pooping regularly, if you're constipated, that is going to impact your body weight. Um, sleep and stress can impact water retention. Um, they can create inflammation, which is going to, you know, show up on the scale. There are a lot of factors that can change day to day that are gonna make the scale go up and down. And that's just is like scientific fact. And kind of accepting that is really helpful because then when you get on the scale and you see that it's fluctuated, you're like, okay, this is normal. Like, let's say the scale is 170 pounds on Monday and then you get on the next day, it's 172 pounds. It is biologically, physiologically, scientifically impossible for you to gain two pounds of body fat overnight. It is impossible. You have not gained two pounds of body fat overnight. Something else has fluctuated. Likely your body's retaining more water. That's like the biggest thing. Why is it retaining more water? Could be one of the reasons I listed 
a little while, uh, you know, a couple minutes ago, could be another reason that I'm not even including, right? There are, our bodies are adapting and they are constantly responding to stimulus and inputs and water retention is one of those responses, right? If you eat a shit ton of salty food, your body's going to retain water to balance that out. That's chemistry. That's like, that's science. Um, We can't control that. Your body is doing that as like a protective measure for you. Um, It's not a bad thing. Um, it's a bad thing if you're constantly eating tons and tons of salty foods and your body is chronically retaining water. Yes, that's then something that needs to be addressed. Um, so just accepting that fluctuations are normal is a really important part. If, if you want, if you are someone who wants to use the scale, you need to accept that it's going to go up and down every day. It's going to look like a jagged line. It's not, if you're working on fat loss, it is not going to be a straight, smooth, downward curving line. It is going to be a jagged line up and down, like picture like the stock market when you see a graph of the stock market like that. And over time, we want the trend of that line to be gently, shallowly, downward sloping, right? That slow, sustainable weight loss over time. But as you draw that kind of that, that line through it to see the overall trend within that are going to be all kinds of spikes. And that is totally normal. And, you know, there's a lot of different ways to use the scale. You can obviously choose not to use it at all. And if you are working on fat loss, you can choose not to use the scale. There are other ways to measure progress, arguably that are, to be honest, may give you more helpful information um, like how your clothes are fitting, right? Yes, clothes can, the how clothes fit can shift a little bit because of water retention, but over kind of like a bigger span of time, um, if you notice the way your clothes are fitting is either getting like tighter or looser, right? That's going to be more of an indication of fat loss, some muscle loss and some muscle gain too, right? So there's really, the only way to tell the difference between fat loss and muscle loss and fat gain and, well, I shouldn't say that, not the only way, um, are, you know, like tools that measure body fat, which are not all precise and not really anything. I shouldn't say there's some things now you can do at home, but if you're working on gaining muscle and you're getting stronger, you're probably, you're also going and you're working on maybe hypertrophy, which is increasing muscle size, right? That could cause potentially your clothes to get tighter. You might not necessarily be gaining body fat, but maybe you're gaining muscle. I'm kind of going off on a tangent. I want to pull myself back in because that's a little bit of a separate episode. Um, But what I was starting to talk about before I, you know, went down that road is that you can weigh yourself never. (laughs) You can weigh yourself every day and you can weigh yourself any amount in between. But whatever you choose to do, the context around that matters, So if you are someone who decides I'm going to weigh myself once a week, you need to remember that you're not seeing all those fluctuations day to day. So you could get on the scale on a a Wednesday and maybe that's a day when your your body weight is fluctuated up and you haven't seen all those other data points between this Wednesday and last Wednesday when maybe there were a couple where it was down. So you don't have all the data. You have a very limited amount of data, and therefore we can't draw as many conclusions from that. We don't get as much information. We can't interpret that data in the same way as if you weigh yourself every day, you see those fluctuations. You get more data, gives you more information, gives you better insights. Now, I'm not telling you that you need to weigh yourself every day. That is a very individualized decision that's going to be based on your history with dieting, your body image kind of your relationship with the scale and how much you rely on it for your self-worth, for your happiness, for your mood, for letting it set the tone for the day. Um, I'm simply letting you know that how often you choose to weigh yourself, you have to use sort of the context around that for how you interpret that information. You can't use the data you get for weighing yourself once a week in the same way that you get that you use the data if you weigh yourself every day. You just, you can't. It's not the same. You're not getting the same amount of information. You cannot draw the same insights. It would be like, you know, a pharmaceutical company doing an experiment on one person and doing it on 100 people and taking the data they get from one person and using it the same way as the data they get from 100 people. You'd be like, hell no, I want the data from 100 people. I want more information to know whether or not this is good for me. It's the same thing, right? Weighing yourself 30 times, meaning every day over the course of the month versus weighing yourself 
four times, which would be once a week over the course of the month, you are not getting the same data. You cannot use it in the same way. And that's okay. One is not better than the other. This is just facts. So just think about that because I have worked with and know a lot of people who like to weigh themselves once a week, totally fine. But then if they see that that number is up, it's like, oh my God, I've gained weight. Mm, Probably not. You probably haven't. The scale has just gone up as a response to something you've eaten or how you've exercised or not exercised or how you have been sleeping or not sleeping or stress or all of these factors that impact our weight. Um, So that's really, really important. Um, I mentioned this before a little bit. I'm going to go back to it. Like the scale, again, cannot distinguish between water, between muscle, between body fat, between poop. It doesn't know the difference. It's just giving you a number, right? And remember, when we want to lose, when we talk about losing weight, we're talking about losing fat. We want to lose, when you want to lose fat, you will inevitably lose some muscle. That is normal and that is okay. We want to mitigate that meaning minimize it as much as possible by eating sufficient protein, which is going to be 0.75 times your body weight in pounds. And if that number freaks you out, there's other episodes you can listen to about how to work yourself up towards that goal. If you're eating, you're probably not eating anywhere close to that right now. That's okay. You don't start doing that tomorrow. You work up to it. And I'm going to link um, the protein episode in the show notes. So that if you're like, oh my God, what's she talking about? I'm freaking out now. Don't freak out. It's okay. There's a way to get there over time. But mitigating muscle loss while you want to lose weight happens from eating sufficient protein and from strength training. Um, You don't want to lose weight. You want to lose fat. That's super important. And the scale is not really showing you the difference between those two things. Again, so how do you know? Often you can tell by how your clothes fit, by you know, what your body looks like, right? I know that might bring up some like, well, what about body image? And why does it matter what I look like? Right, we have to look at these things more objectively, right? If you want to lose fat, you can see some of those changes physically happening in your body. Again, like that's just objective science. Like you can see, like I know I've talked about this openly recently, I've gained weight in my stomach. I can physically see it. Like, I don't need a scale to tell me. I don't need clothes to tell me. I can see it on my belly, right? And I know that when I have less fat on my belly, I know that it looks different. That's not a judgment about what is good or what is bad, but you can visually see body fat changes. Um, Just like you can sometimes also visually see muscular changes. Even if you have kind of some body fat over it, you can, if you've built like a good amount of muscle, you can often see it feel it, feel it like touching it, but feel it also like in your movement. So just remember that the scale is not the most accurate measure of how your body fat is changing, how your clothes fit, kind of how you feel, what you see in the mirror, again, without judgment. I just want to repeat that because I think that people are going to hear me say that, oh, you can see weight loss, you see it reflected back in the mirror and they're going to think that it's like, well, what about body? Like, it's just about seeing it and objectively saying, yes, I see more body fat. Yes, I see less body fat without labeling it, without judging it, without assigning meaning to it. Factual. More body fat, less body fat, right? These are objective facts that we then assign meaning to. Okay. So that's the difference here. Um, You know, so just kind of going back to the scale so many of us, I would say, I, I, I would bet 95% of the people listening to this have at one point or another let the scale dictate your self-worth, your mood, how you interact with other people, how you talk to yourself, how you eat for the rest of that day, right? So that number fluctuates up for all the reasons I've talked about. And you're like, oh my God, I'm disgusting. I'm not eating carbs today. I can't wear this outfit and you're in a shitty mood all day. The next day the scale goes down. You're like, oh my God, great. Look, it worked. Like, I'm amazing. I'm wonderful. Part of the work around the scale, if you are someone who wants to weigh yourself every day to get that data, there's also a lot of mental and emotional work that needs to go along with that so that you learn how to not assign the meaning 
to those numbers that you have been. And in some ways, I did this. I weighed myself every day for a very long time, and it was a huge factor in why I really now no longer give a shit about the scale. My skill, the battery happens to be dead. I haven't weighed myself in a while because I haven't had a battery. I know for sure that that number is up. I don't know how much. I'm kind of guessing it's in like mm, the five to six to seven pound range. Um, And I'm like, you know what? Okay. I shared an email. If you're not on my email list, um, you can always sign up for that. But I shared an email kind of with an update about my functional medicine stuff and some changes. Like I am arguably healthier now based on um, how I've been eating, how I've been moving, supplements I've been taking, and my body composition hasn't changed at all. Um, The things I was worried about, specifically some of the cardiovascular risks I was worried about because of the additional belly fat and because of the PCOS, everything, all the markers have improved. So all this to say that what the scale number says is not always... I mean, I might say even ever a reflection of your health. Um, There's a lot of other markers and pieces of data and information. That being said, right, the scale is still part of our lives. It's still something we have a relationship with. And when you, if you do decide to weigh yourself every day, you start to see those fluctuations, right? And when you are really focused on your effort, and on your actions, prioritizing protein, prioritizing fiber, using plate planning, exercising, um, working on body image skills, right? All the skills that we work on in coaching, you know that you are showing up for yourself and you you're, you rely, not rely on that, but you use that as kind of a measure of, of who you are because that those are the actions in alignment with your values. The number on the scale is going to do what it is going to do. There are a lot of things in this life that we have no control over, and the number on that scale is at the very top of that list. You cannot control it. You cannot manipulate it. I mean, I shouldn't say that. There are obviously athletes and wrestlers who do crazy things, and they do. It is crazy extreme behavior that people do to manipulate the scale, Um, which I'm not even going to get into because it's really not part of this conversation. But You can't control the rate at which your body loses fat. You can't control how much water your body holds on to if you've eaten a salty meal or if you've you've eaten more carbs. Um, Your body's going to do what it's going to do to protect you and to keep you safe, right? That is your body's job, is to keep you alive, to keep you safe, to protect you. Everything it does is in service of that. That is evolution, right? Survival of the fittest. And your body will do whatever it needs to do to keep you alive, even if it's not really doesn't make sense to you or goes going against what you want it to be doing up in your brain. So when you weigh yourself every day, you start to see those fluctuations. And when you're taking consistent action in alignment with your values, you are able to kind of separate those two things and really see, okay, I'm feeling good, I'm eating protein, I'm exercising, et cetera, et cetera, and the scale went up, it's gone up, and it's gone up, and it's gone up, and it's gone up, and I'm going to keep going with what I am doing and what I know works because I know I feel good. And if you're working on fat loss and you keep going with that, the scale will go down eventually. Don't know when, don't know how long it's going to take, it will go down, and then it'll go back up, and then it'll go down, and you'll get your little stock market grid. But values, actions, and effort aligned with your values, what's important to you, what makes you you, that is what helps you separate yourself emotionally from the scale because you no longer have to rely on that number for your self-worth and to tell you if you're doing a, quote, good job or doing a bad job. You know what you're doing because you are working on those skills, right? And that's where your intention and your awareness is focused, is on taking action on those skills every day, not getting up and stepping on the scale and being, holy shit, what's it going to say? What's my day going to be like? What kind of mood am I going to be in today? You're leaving it up to the scale to decide that for you. It's such a miserable way to live. And I know that 99% of you listening know that feeling where the scale dictates your mood for better or worse, right? It goes down, you're in a great mood. It goes up, life sucks. It does not have to be that way. And the same thing goes, even if you're using the scale once a week, same thing goes, right? You want to be able to look at that number objectively as a piece of information, one piece of information 
mixed in with lots of other pieces of information, right, that give you insight into what you might want to change or what might you what you might want to keep the same. Um, you know, we're looking to move in a direction like more neutrality towards the scale. It's a piece of objective information. It is not a judgment on your self-worth. It is not a measure of how good of a person you are, how bad of a person you are. It is not um, a reflection of how hard you've tried or how hard you haven't tried. It's just a piece of data. And again, I know we can logically hear that and it makes sense, but then how do you actually internalize that? And again, I'll say it again, you internalize it by identifying what your values are, what's important to you, what makes you you. And sometimes a way to do that, because sometimes it's hard to do that around food, is think about some of the most important things in your life that you really care about. Why do you care about them? What makes them meaningful to you? That can start to help you identify your values. Then we take that and apply it to food, to exercise, to self-care. And when you start to identify skills to help you take action and align with those values in those areas, and you do that consistently, that is how you separate yourself. That is how you stop applying so much meaning to that number. Because now you derive your meaning, your self-worth from those actions aligned with your values, not from this random fucking number that you can't control, right? It's like the same thing with the clothing sizes, right? It's like you buy a pair of jeans from a store and you get the same jeans, the same size, a different color, and they fit totally fucking different. Like I did an episode on this and you're like, oh my God, what's wrong with me? These pants don't fit. Well, no, it's because they change the sizes and there's no like standard to how those sizes are done. So you're leaving your well-being and self-worth up to this totally random flawed system, right? When if you focus on what you can control and what you do and the actions you take in alignment with your values, then you don't have to rely on that external uncontrollable stuff anymore. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I wanted to talk about. I, I make a list now of, of things and I keep looking over at it here. Um, I think I kind of mentioned this, but really like a smaller number on the scale is not a measure of health. You can, and again, if you're listening to this podcast, you've done it before, you can lose weight and not be a healthier person, right? If you have sacrificed your mental and emotional health with an extremely rigid, restrictive diet, if you are binging or overeating, if you are constantly emotional eating, you know, that you, so my point being, I kind of just like pulled in a couple of other concepts that maybe necessarily weren't tied into this, but you can be a smaller weight and not be a healthier person, right? Because you can lose weight in an unhealthy way. And when I say unhealthy way, you can restrict entire food groups. So your body's lacking certain uh, nutrients and nutrition. Um, and for that same reason, you can be really negatively impacting your mental and emotional well-being. Um, so just keep that in mind. Again, we have been so conditioned to think smaller number going down is good. Bigger number going up is bad. And it is, that is an ex extremely reductionist view of what health is, of what the scale is useful for, of what those numbers mean. It's just really not helpful at all. There's so much more context and so much more nuance to it. Um, so just kind of, you know, put that in the back of your mind. Again, I'm going to say it again for maybe definitely the third, maybe even the fourth or fifth time, but that's okay because we need to hear things way more than five times before they sink in. If you are struggling with the scale, with that number, where you know that it is dictating your mood for the day, where you have anxiety before you get on the scale for what that number is going to say and how it's going to make you feel, if you change your behaviors based on the number that you see, if you are restricting food and the scale is going down and it reinforces you to help con to continue restricting the food, if the scale goes up and you're like, oh, I got to cut something out, I got to do extra workouts at the gym, I've got to change something, and you're doing that constantly, right? There's that, it's a, co a constant reaction, react, react, react to those numbers on a daily or sometimes even on a weekly basis, right? That is when you need to take a step back and say, okay, I am, I have put all 
of my self-worth and I am relying 100% on that number to make decisions for me and how I'm going to feel about myself. And that is when we need to start really working on skills. And again, find figuring out what your values are. And I know I talk about this a lot and I've done a podcast episode about it and I will try to remember to link it in the show notes again. But figuring out who you are and what makes you you, right? I talk about my values, kindness and self-compassion a lot. And I apply those to food and eating and exercise and self-care and managing stress. It's work. It's hard. I'm not perfect at it by any means, but I am always trying to show up for myself and think about how are the ways that I'm responding to some of my negative thoughts? Are those responses, those those feelings, those thoughts, the behaviors that come out of those feelings and thoughts, are they in alignment with my values or not? Right. So really getting clear on that and figuring out how you take action in alignment with your values, that is how you stop relying less on the scale. Just hearing me say that, just hearing me say, oh, stop doing that is fine, but we all know like that's not enough, right? We can hear things logically. Oh, I need to eat more protein. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, I need to go for walks. I need to strength train. Yeah, I totally get it. It makes sense. Actually doing those things and making them happen consistently over the long term, that's the work. That's what coaching is about, right? That's behavior change. Um, I would argue that coaching is much less about like, oh, you know, you need to eat more protein and more vegetables. And like, well, how do I actually do that? <laughs> right? That's the challenge. So anyway, I feel like I went off on a bunch of tangents in this episode. I'm sorry. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Um, Thanks for listening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing the podcast. And I will be back as always next Monday.